Frank's Red Hot is the perfect blend of flavor and heat. So you can use an entire bottle to make recipes like buffalo chicken dip or buffalo nachos. Or even things that don't start with buffalo. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. Craig? We're in my clubhouse. Come inside. There's beer inside. <laughs> We're in my clubhouse. Come inside, there's beer inside. There's definitely beer inside. Yeah, I know you know that song because you have kids. Absolutely. Well, when I came in, uh, B was was dancing to Mickey's. Well, she was kind of, she wasn't really dancing at that point anymore because the dogs, the dogs greeted me at the door with their uh, their ferocious attack dog barks. Yes, I know the combined thirty pounds of dog was <laughs> had you shaking in your boots. Should we uh, should we tell people what we got going here? We're we're on location here at yeah. uh, Podcast HQ West. Yeah, for the first time recording both of us in the same house. Um, I've, of course, the first time we recorded together was uh, that tailgate, yeah, the tailgate one, but this one we actually have a mixing board. Mm-hmm. Um, the sound probably sounds a lot better than that tailgate one. Jeff's yeah. microphone is actually picking up. Yeah, uh, we got both microphones working this time. Yep, yeah, yeah, this is this is great. Um, but yeah, uh, welcome to Podcast versus Everyone. I'm Craig Powers. With me in person is Jeff Newser. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, Craig. I'm right over here on your couch, looking across your coffee table at you. Uh, your chair looks less comfortable than than the couch it's, I'm it's sitting on. It's less comfortable, though. but you know, I was concerned about the beer. Uh, with from the cords from the microphones getting knocked over, yeah, uh, that's more important than anything. And we do have cords sort of running everywhere at the moment, um, which I think you can kind of see if you go if you go to our Twitter Twitter feed. Craig took a picture of our beer and and posted it, and so uh, you can kind of see the cords that we have running around everywhere. We got our microphone cords, we got USB cords, we got computers, we got power cords. Man, we we got it all. Yep, yep. So this is the trial run of uh, using. You know, in-person technology, um, the old IP, as they call it on the internet. That's right. And we, uh, so this is this is our first episode in almost two weeks, thanks to, uh, if you listen to the, the little bonus episode, I don't know if you can call it an episode, it's like an Bonus update. content. Yeah, because, okay, so for, you know, I left it for the subscribers who have noticed uh, a change in their feed this week. Uh, because we have combined the Coog Center podcasts into one Coog Center feed. So everybody's feeds look really different. So if you, again, if you were a subscriber to the Coog Center Hour, you saw a whole bunch of our episodes plop in there. And you might have also seen vice versa if you were a subscriber to us. So anyway, um, while we were sort of making that transition, we, we also transitioned to some new software. And uh, the software ate our podcast, Craig. Yeah, that was, uh, I had a real special beer. Um, that's what I'm most concerned about, but obviously we, it took us forever just to figure out how to get it set up. Uh, that's probably the most time we've spent recording a podcast and then it was, it was gone. It was gone. I, I don't, I don't know if people missed that much. I mean, we, um, we talked about Robert Frank's, which we're going to talk about Robert Frank's today. Yep. So that's good. Uh, Booby. we talked about Booby Williams. Uh, I mean, we, we can basically distill that, right? We're disappointed the Kansas City Chiefs cut him, and we hope he catches on with another team. Yep, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. And we, we spent like... We like Booby. We, we spent 10 minutes talking well. about that before. Yeah. So we probably just saved you 10 minutes of wasted time because we just really distilled it down to our actual opinions just now. Yeah, and yeah. we can get into uh, Robert Frank's contract and stuff when we talk about him yeah. and his first summer league yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... Um, as Jeff said, you're 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 getting Kook Center Hour and uh, Podcast versus Everyone into your feed now. It's labeled as Kook Center Podcasts. It's it's not labeled as Podcast versus Everyone anymore, um, but this is still Podcast versus Everyone. Um, we're still calling it that. We're going to still trying to bring you weekly episodes, um, and we're going to have a special episode to make up for. Uh, yeah, yeah. To make up for that that uh, messed up one, and I, I think it'll be something you guys will like. So, um, it's something I ripped off from another podcast. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so um, Jeff, uh, let me. I'll let you do the honors. We yeah. are drinking the same beer. Yeah. Uh, and one, one other quick thing before we get to that beer, oh. I do I do want to make let people know. Yes, you you will have ads now. Oh yes. Yeah. So that that's sort of the uh, that, that's the trade off here for joining the old uh, SB Nation podcasting network, which is kind of how we were able to 
was how we were able to bring this under one feed. But, uh, you know, again, those of you who are skilled at using your 30 second advance buttons as I am when I'm in the car or on your watch as I am at times, uh, you'll be able to, uh, I'm sure, skillfully navigate those uh, skillfully navigate those ads. Although I will say that I did actually get turned on to a new podcast. I can't remember which one, <laughs> but but actually did get turned on to a new podcast from those ads. So they're not. You know, maybe you'll find uh, maybe you'll find some value in them, um, but at any rate, we we hope to make them as as non intrusive as possible. And then the other thing is, as Craig mentioned, uh, obviously we'll still have both shows. Michael's still doing his show, um, so if you like the Kook Center, are great. So basically, what you'll just have to do is just look at the title of the episode to see uh, which show it is that that you're listening to. Ours will be clearly labeled podcast versus everyone. Uh, Michael's will be clearly labeled the Kook Center Hour, and then you'll you'll be able to listen to. To both of those, or neither of those, or either of those, whichever whichever tickles your fancy. Okay, so here's what here's what we're drinking. All right, so I am I am at Craig's house, which means that um, I get treated to the Craig beer. The beer fairy has gone into his uh, his stash and pulled out uh, pulled out some to share. So we're starting with uh, Wayfinder Birthday Beer, um, also labeled on the other end a premium lager. So, what do you think, Craig? So it's a strong lager. Yes, uh, I can taste that for sure. Um, it's six point six six percent. That is so. Lagers would typically run like four and a half, yeah, five percent, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but this you're a strong lager, um, so it's got a little bit more uh, body to it, a little bit more heft, uh, definitely a little bit more hoppiness than uh, other Wayfinder lagers I've had, and. Uh, um, pick this up uh for the fourth of july um i always like to wayfinder makes uh some of the best loggers uh, you can find they're located in portland uh they have a really cool um uh i don't know if you've been there jeff but they have a really cool uh uh brewery location um not in this location like it's you know it's portland it's like in a warehouse where in portland is it uh, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the areas. Come on, Craig. Do, do you know? It's in the east side of Portland. Okay. Uh, obviously, that's where most of the good stuff is. Yeah, um, that's where uh, Great Notion is. Do you know? Uh, yeah, one of their location. They have another location. In Great yeah, Notion I know. They opened a second one, um, but the original in, one. In Northwest Portland. Which I've been to, yeah. So I'd say it's, uh, d- uh, do you know, uh, do you know where like um, Belmont Street is? No. Uh, do you know where the Modern Times no. Places? Do you know where Cascade Barrel House, the sour place is? Nope. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know Portland anymore. So I don't know why you either. asked me where it was. <laughs> um, also, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know how to use Google Maps. And uh, go ahead and type Wayfinder Beer into there. They got a really cool um, deck. Uh, and they do food service. They got good food. Um, and they do a lot of, uh, lagers, really clean German style beers and stuff like that. They do, uh, nice IPAs and, and other stuff as well, but the kind of their, um, what you'll find up here in, in like Tacoma boys and stuff like that, um, is, uh, their 16 ounce cans of their lagers. I really like their hell lager. It's a hellish lager. It's a, a lighter one. Um, and then they have this other one called tasties. Uh, it's a Dortmunder lager, which I drink quite a bit of. Um, but this one I tried, it's definitely a little different than their other ones. It's a bigger and hoppier beer. Uh, so I thought I'd it'd be interesting to share with you. It is their birthday beer, which they brewed for their second anniversary. So they're not an old brewery by any means, uh, but they've definitely made a, a name for themselves. Um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, what are you thinking, Jeff? What do you think of this well, beer? What's interesting is that, uh, so I didn't know it was a lager or a strong lager when I was, when I first tasted it. So I, I, I tasted it and then I wasn't really sure what to think. I was like, I'm not, you, you know what I mean? Like when in some ways it was kind of a blind taste test, yeah. right? Cause I just like, I didn't know what it was that I was, what I was having. And now once I saw it's a lager, I'm like, okay, so now I can sort of like recognize those lager, like just sort of the typical right. lager flavors. Um, and I think probably the reason why it seemed a little bit odd was because, I mean, it really is sort of the color of like a, like a, like a, you know, your kind of typical West coast IPA, right. it's, you know, it's kind of a golden amber color. Um, it's not the gold color you would expect from a lager. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, like the hoppiness to it, it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely interesting and, uh, and different. And that's the thing, by the way. So, you know, beyond the fact that, that Craig is, is sort of the beer fairy, one of the things I love also is that like Craig always has something like different that I haven't tried before. So, because I'm not, you know, I, I don't typically go to uh, the beer store or whatever, 
and really branch out a ton in terms of, of flavors or styles that, that I go toward. Um, because I kind of, you know, like if I buy something, I want to like it. So, (laughs) but I also know that if you're going to pull it out is going to be, is probably gonna be pretty good. And so, yeah, this is, this is interesting and different and, uh, it's cool. I like it. Yeah. And definitely check out Wayfinder if you're in, uh, one of the best breweries to visit and then just, uh, excellent brews across the, across the board. And, and it's funny, uh, we went there once I was there with, uh, uh, Amanda and B and we were meeting a friend for uh, dinner there and we just like walked in. It was crazy crowded, but there was no sign that said like, you know, check in with, they it said check in for the patio, but it didn't say check in for inside. So we found a table inside. We're just sitting down there waiting. And, uh, this lady comes up and says, Oh, uh, actually you're supposed to, you know, we're like saving those tables for, you know, people to come. And so we're like, Oh, sorry, we didn't know that. And so, we go back out to wait and then like five seconds by the time we even get back to the to the hostess uh the host uh uh area she's just like you know what just go sit there you got the baby and i'm like <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so we got this like big booth that's for like eight people yeah. for like the three of us and a baby and had some really good food and uh if you if you uh my my friend was is pescatarian, vegetarian, you know, and, and so she she was able to have plenty of stuff to eat. So, yeah, they got it. I mean, it's Portland; it's hard to f- go to a place and not have those options. Yeah, but, it's really hard. Um, to go to a place but uh, and not have but that. but uh, they have lots of good uh, carnivore <laughs> food as well. Um, but yeah, it's a great great space, uh, great brewery. Um, you can find their beer in Washington at very select places, uh, not necessarily everywhere. Um, and then in, in portland uh at your finer uh beer stores um so yeah it's definitely uh something you have to look for uh but uh they just if you like clean good loggers uh definitely definitely check them out and go check them out if you're in portland yeah yummy and we'll have another beer uh, we have another beer on the table yeah so maybe when we move on to the next beer we'll just take like a beer break and we'll yeah. talk about that beer yeah yeah maybe, maybe we'll talk about wsu stuff and then we'll uh transition in, in between, so so our, our WSU fans can can get through that without having to hear about another beer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, we had some pretty, you know, we we uh, we talked about if there was any more news, it probably wouldn't be good news. And uh, I know. And now we that, kept that, our mouths that shut. finally uh, that came to fruition. Uh, so um, Jalen Thompson, probably our best uh, returning defensive player, maybe even our best player, overall, maybe even our best honest. player. Period. Um, one of the best safeties in the country. Uh, well, not anymore. Uh, but <laughs> he was, <laughs> he maybe. was one of the best safeties in the country. Definitely one of the best safeties in the Pac 12. Um, found out late that he is not eligible for next season, uh, because of, uh, some over the counter supplements. And so he is entering uh, supplements. And yeah. then, so he is entering the NF- NFL, entering the NFL supplemental draft. Yeah. So that's a bummer uh, for major bummer WSU's defense. Probably a bummer for Jalen. I'm sure you'd have liked to finish out his college career and enter uh, the regular draft process. He definitely would have been a guy that would have went to the combine. Probably would have been a mid rounder, mid to high rounder. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but now he's you know he's taken a, a different way. Um, so Jeff. Um, uh, what, what is the supplemental draft? <laughs> so, I mean, the supplemental draft isn't really used much anymore. Uh, it, you know, people might remember back in the eighties, it was, um, it was used strategically by some players. Uh, so Bernie Kosar being, being the most obvious example, um, he did not want to play for either of the teams at the top of the draft. And so, uh, he decided he was going to, you know, basically not declare for the regular draft, go into the supplemental draft, and then hopefully end up somewhere different. Of course, he ended up in Cleveland, so I'm not sure that was <laughs> any better. But, uh, you know, Brian Bosworth did the same thing. Um, Tim Rosenbaugh ended up I, – I, I don't think he used it strategically. I think his was an academic eligibility thing. I could be wrong about that. I should I should probably know that better since I'm a I'm a Coug fan. And PJ wrote about it, like, last week, so yep. now, now I feel bad. Um but uh, nowadays, it's mostly used for people in Jalen's situation where they either, um, you know, they, they lose their eligibility somehow and or there's a coaching change and they just they don't like the new guy or whatever. Um, but typically it's it's a situation like this where where a guy has lost his eligibility or is facing some kind of suspension um, and is just 
you know, rather than sticking around, um, it's he's just going to go on and get on with it. The, the hard part is, you know, number one, um, teams have already drafted and, and made their free agent moves based off of, uh, you know, all that information. So now he's kind of, you know, maybe there's a team that still has a need at safety or maybe there's a team that um, likes him as a project or something like that. But um, my sense is that uh, the supplemental draft at this point sort of cuts down on your chances to um, – you know, really get drafted high and make much of an impact because not only have teams sort of already made their roster plans, um, they've already had, you know, rookie OTAs, they've had regular OTAs. I mean, they're getting ready to start train. I mean, really they start training a lot. Some of these teams start training camp in three weeks. So you, he will have had no time with the playbook, no time with the team. Um, he's going to be, you know, him and, and the other guys in the supplemental draft, they're going to be behind the curve in terms of, uh, you know, fitting in with their new team. So, you know, I did see a thing somewhere. I can't remember if it was a commenter on Coog Center or if it was, um, you know, if it was somebody else that I saw on Twitter or something like that. But they, they, they mentioned that, um, you know, players a lot of times will go about a round lower than what you expect, what, what a guy might otherwise go simply because of all these different factors. So, um, and teams also obviously don't want to give up draft capital that they don't right. have to. And so unless you've got a team that's got some excess draft capital in those sort of mid rounds, fourth, fifth round. Right. You know, and so I'm, I'm really curious to see what kind of uh, what kind of draft pick someone's willing to give up. Oh, that was the other part that yeah. I, I didn't explain. So if you if you, you put in a bid for the guys who are in the supplemental draft, you put in a bid for the round that you'd like, you'd be willing to draft them. Uh, if yours is the highest, then you get them and you forfeit that pick. In next, next year's year. draft, yeah. so a team that's got a lot of picks next year, like say the Seahawks, have a ton of picks next year. Um, they might be the kind of team, and then and also they've got a you know a young secondary and could be looking for more talent there. Um, you know, so they'd be the kind of team that might take a chance on a guy like like Jalen Thompson. So, so yeah, it's it's not ideal, but you know it's good that the supplemental draft, I guess, provides him an avenue still to get to the yeah. league in, in this sort of situation. And and I, I really, I mean, I hope he does great. I, I don't wish him any ill will. I'm just bummed, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a bummer um, uh, in terms of uh, WSU's uh, defense. Uh, obviously. You know they they loaded up on uh, junior college safeties uh, in in the yep. re, in the recruiting class this yep. year, so there are bodies to fill. But I, it's it's hard to believe that any of them are as good as Jalen and will have the impact that he does. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, I think that's, I think that's the assumption is that you know you lose the guy who might be the best player in your defense, your defense is going to be worse. I yeah. mean, that's. You know, I mean, and maybe the defense will be fine. That, that's not necessarily to say that the defense will be bad. Of course, we lost it, a, we right? lost our best player last year, and then right. our defense was better than ever. Right. But, if, but this year, you, you now adding on top of losing Pelor, uh, you're losing Jalen. So that's a yeah. lot of leadership on defense. Yeah. That's a lot of just uh, playmakers, yep. playmaking ability. They've also lost they lost their nose tackle. Uh, yep. Really, yep. you know, Taylor Comfort really underrated. I think yep. we've talked about that before. Um, so they, they've kind of lost, and I know that uh, – you know, I think they, they talk about this a lot in baseball. I, I don't know how much they talk about it in football, but in a lot of ways you've sort of lost the spine of the defense, right? right? You've lost your uh you know, your your plugger in the middle, he's disruptor. Taylor Comfort was was much more disruptive, I think, than most people realize. Uh Palour, obviously a stud in the middle, uh very steady, and then and then Thompson as as sort of your lead safety. So um yeah, it's it's a bummer and there's definitely gonna be some question marks with that. Um, you know, but I mean, it's not again, not to say that they're going to be worse overall than they were last year. I just think it's hard to imagine that they will be as strong this year without him as they would have been with him, if that makes sense. Yep. And yeah, all because uh, some over the counter. Yeah. I mean, OK, man. so let, let's talk about that for a sec. Yeah. Like, OK, so the process of, you know, take it like pl- pl- athletes take supplements. Right? right. You know, I mean, look. I, you know, in my younger days, I bought supplements at GNC. I don't know if you ever bought a supplement before. Did you ever buy a supplement before? No. <laughs> I, I, I think, never tried to get swole. I, I think I bought some creatine once. Like, I mean, this is probably like 20 years ago. Right. Uh, that that stuff was weird. Anyway, um, but the idea is that, uh, you know, the, those supplements are not very well regulated. Uh, pretty much anything can make their way into them. There, right. There's no... There's no government body that's testing each of them to make sure that they are free of 
um, potentially illegal substances, things like that. And then not only that, there's lots of substances that aren't illegal that like, like illegal according to the law. Right. But are banned by the NCAA and various right. sport organizations. And then also the other thing is that, um, people don't often remember also, uh, the concept of masking agents, which are right. the, the things that you take over the counter that are designed to help you beat a drug test. So, um, you know, could have been that as well. We just, we don't know, but we do know that the NCAA's list of banned substances is very, very long. Mm -hmm. And kind of the bummer part about it for me, I mean, beyond the on-field stuff, the thing that I just like shake my head at is, um, you know, you don't hear very often of somebody flunking an NCAA test. Um, right. There's a reason for that. It, it's I've been told it's a fairly difficult test to fail and not in not in the terms of um, what they test for anything like that, but just sort of knowing when it's coming and how to make sure you're not taking, you know what I mean? Like sort of all that stuff that, that it, the reason why you don't hear about people flunking these tests and getting suspended very often is because it's not a very easy test to flunk. And so, um, so that's the other bummer part too. It seems like this would have been pretty avoidable. Right. Um, you know, they, they do, I, you know, I know that they tell these guys to, um, you know, if you, if you buy something over the counter, please, you know, bring it to us. Let's make sure it's okay. Or just take all of our stuff. Cause WSU has their own supplements. Yeah. Right. That's, so. that's, that's kind of the interesting thing is like, you got to think that the, the uh, PAC 12 football program has just everything you, you would think you, you, when you have a strength and conditioning coach and, and he's running that program, he probably keeps everything in there that, that anyone would need uh, in terms of, you know, building muscle and, and recovery and, and and obviously everything that they would have would be approved, but you never know. Uh, Jalen obviously was a top player and competitive guy, and yeah, I mean he could have been at home, and yeah, you know I think he's from California. He could have been at home and just hey, I need a whatever, I need a protein shake to have after workouts, and you know he bought the bought the wrong protein shake or right. something, you know, yeah, or it could be something more nefarious. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> so no could reason. be. We don't know. But yeah. Give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll miss you, Jalen. Yeah. Uh, gave us a good three years. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely was a huge part to the success of the defense, the improvement of the defense in the last few years. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who of the slew of uh, JC safeties yeah. will fill that void. Yeah, and we, we don't know, frankly, what that's going to look like. Um, we do know there's a lot of parts that can get moved around. Right. They've recruited a ton of guys of, of similar, you know, size and skill and, and whatever. So, um, you know, they could, you know, maybe just take a guy. So I know that Bryce Beekman was running next to uh, Thompson during the spring right. um, at uh, at the other safety. And then I know that, uh, you know, up at they had moved Skylar Thomas, who started next to Jalen all last year. They had moved him up to um, Nickelback to Nickelback. Um, but I know they also were working Patrick Nunn in at Nickelback. And mm -hmm. I, the day I was at practice, um, he had a huge hit on uh, on Cassidy Woods, actually. <laughs> Blew him up big time. Um, so, you know, there, there's some pieces there to move around. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they, they decide to stay with, you know, Thomas and Beekman where they've been practicing. And then maybe they find someone to plug in in Thompson's spot. Or if they decide maybe we'll move Beekman to Thompson's spot, move Skylar Thomas back have none or somebody else play, play nickel. So, um, it's definitely going to be interesting. I, the good thing is they do have, um, a good number of mature bodies that I know they like, uh, to play back there. And so I think that that's, you know, it, again, we're not saying anybody's going to replace Jalen, you know, in his spot, but, um, I do think that they have the pieces to mitigate the loss and that it's, um, you know, fairly fortuitous that they had, you know, recruited so heavily at the junior college level. And they've got some guys who, um, at the very least seem physically ready, right. You know, yeah. to play back there. So, yeah, we're not, we're not throwing in a true freshman. Or no, something. no, we're not just, it's not going to be a situation where you're just throwing in someone that, uh, uh, that, that has zero experience and, and hasn't seen anything. And then, you know, again, uh, the benefit of, of sort of the Mike Leach scheduling program, you know, they won't see what, what figures to be a competent offense until week three. So, right. um, they've got their first two games against two terribly weak opponents at home. Yeah. So that should, uh, in theory, at least provide a little bit of a soft landing for the guys who are transitioning into that spot. Yeah. You know what we should do right now, Craig? What? We should take a commercial break. Sounds great. We'll be back in a sec.
Cool. That was cool. Yeah. I don't know what you just heard an ad for, but you heard an ad, so man, what a, good what, job. What an ad it was. What what an addition, addition to our podcast. Yes. Good, My kids would good, laugh at that good dad joke. Good dad joke. My kids would laugh. Yeah, so so I guess uh, um, now that you've been sold something. Uh, we or can, been told to listen to something. Or been told to yeah. listen to something. I don't know, something like that. Um, let's move on to uh, some NBA talk. Uh, Robert Franks out there trying to make the Charlotte Hornets. Um, so we talked about in the Lost podcast, which we will refer to as yeah, the Lost podcast that's that's going to be it from now on. Um, the Lost podcast. Uh, how he uh, he he signed an interesting contract, uh, which uh, uh, a fairly good contract for a guy that went undrafted, yeah. which is uh, essentially a two. It's got two way contract, so. Um, he is uh, uh, he is basically signed with the um, developmental league team, the G League team, but can um, play a certain amount of time up with uh, the big squad with the Hornets. Um, so uh, we, we talked about um, previously on the last podcast is that that was a, that was a good thing for uh, for Franks, and 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 it, and it probably meant that um, Charlotte actually had a plan for him and, and it, it potentially saw him as a piece they could use down the road. Yeah. That was the, the, the idea is that the two way contract is a little bit more of a guarantee, um, than, you know, something like, uh, you know, just a summer league trial or whatever. I mean, he's actually got a contract, right? Um, so the two way contract allows him to play, I, I think be on the first team roster for 45 days without having, uh, without be, having to be signed to a, a regular contract. Time. Right. So it gives them an opportunity to pop up, provide depth, uh, be around the team, practice with the team from time to time, and then also get, uh, you know, work on his game, refine his game in the G League. So I think that th- this was one of those things that came out of the last collective bargaining agreement um, was, I think, one of the things that actually has proved to be reasonably successful. There's been a handful of guys um, that have been able to parlay those uh, a two-way contract into an, an actual NBA contract the next year. So uh, Quinn Cook is one of those guys with the Golden State Warriors. Right. Um, and there's another guy I'm forgetting, but anyway, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a reasonable path, uh, to yeah. the NBA if that's your goal. So, um, it's not easy. Uh, you know, the G league is not, um, you know, not exactly a place that people like to play. Uh, it doesn't pay very well for the most part. Yeah. You definitely can make more money playing in Europe playing overseas, or Australia yeah. or China or yep. whatever. Yeah. A lot, a lot of players decide to go overseas rather than, you know, stick it out in the G league. Right. Um, which, you know, which that end- worked for Bain's particularly because yeah. of the Olympics because yeah. he made the Olympic team yep. and actually played against NBA players at the right. Olympics. And that was where he got right. noticed essentially. Right. But you're, that's, you know, obviously uh, an American like Frank's is not going to get that opportunity. So this yeah. is his, you know, this is a, an easier way to be in front of NBA scouts. Yeah. And, and, and then, uh, and you know, um, a good chance to actually play in the NBA next season. Um, Cause in, uh, given the grueling, the, the grueling NBA schedule, 82 games, lots of back-to-backs, lots of road trips, you know. Um, there's times when they just need, you know, a, a bodies on the bench. So, um, yeah, but so uh, last uh, this week the NBA Summer League has started. So um, I was hoping that we would have some Robert Frank's Summer League action to talk about. But uh, last night um, he got that big fat DMP. Yeah. Uh, so that was a bummer. Not sure what's going on there, but uh, – yeah, I, and I don't know. Uh, maybe I didn't look too hard. Maybe his game got interrupted by the earthquake or um, wh- whatever. But because uh, yeah. I know, I know uh, the big Zion game where it was sold out and people were paying four hundred bucks to sit on the sit on the floor to watch a summer league game because apparently they don't know how summer league works. But um, but uh, yeah, so uh, Zion was um, his the the game their game the Pelicans game was uh, cut short yeah. by the by the earthquake. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't know how it went for Franks. Um, Are we I, sure that wasn't just Zion dunking on well, someone? Well, that there was the triggering an earthquake. I don't know if you saw the uh, the highlight of him just straight up ripping the ball out of a guy's hand. I did. not I haven't then, seen any of it. And then dunking it like it was. <laughs> it was very. It was rude. And it was, <laughs> that is so it, rude. And it was very Zion, but Franks didn't get his opportunity to make that play. Um, uh, but yeah, so hopefully um, as the uh, um, obviously, summer league's pretty short, but hopefully at some point he gets yeah. uh, uh, gets some run. Um, 
and uh, we get to see, uh, we get to, you know, maybe not see him, but I got NBA TV now, so maybe I'll get to see him. Yeah, I mean, they, the rosters are huge. I mean, that's the yeah. one thing. Like, there's, and you get 10 fouls. There's tons so. of guys. Yeah, they, there's tons of guys, and they want to see them. And, you know, I mean, you know, they, they want to see how different guys play together. They, you know, whatever. And I know that uh, uh, Josh Perkins from Gonzaga, yeah. so that we probably have some listeners who actually kind of like Gonzaga, which is unfortunate. But, um, you know, he, uh, he didn't play either. Yep. And that's presumably a guy who might actually have a shot at, at, at making a roster. So, right. um, it could just be a situation where they wanted to see certain units of guys. Um, it could be, you know, I haven't looked that closely at that, their summer league roster. Um, they could have another guy who's very similar to Frank's and, and then, you know, let's just be honest. Frank's is already on the two way contract. Right. So, That's what I was thinking, yeah. yeah. So they they all they're already invested in him to some degree, right? Um, and they might have already sort of made up their mind that he is destined for the G League that that's where they want him to start and that that's what they want him to do. And that maybe there's somebody else who they're sort of pondering or something right. like that. They want to get a little, little more minutes, a few more minutes, a little closer to look at, um, I, you know, who knows? I mean, there's a million reasons why he might not have yeah. played. They know. I mean, uh, to that point, they know he's going to be playing on their G League team. And right. So, uh, he's like, already signed. Which I mean, the, the summer league is basically G League plus some of the top draft picks. And <laughs> so, uh, it's it's an interesting uh, an interesting league, um, and, and definitely some weird rules and all that. But yeah, yeah it's designed for um, for teams to see the players they want to see for as long as possible, right? And for as much as possible. So yeah, if uh, yeah, if, you know, like you said, if Frank's wasn't in the plan for for uh, last night, then maybe maybe uh, I think there's ten games for summer league so like in, in the nine yeah. games that are left yeah. he'll, he'll get on the floor if not we'll have plenty of whatever the uh charlotte hornets g league team is yeah we'll probably figure that out yeah and it's uh the other thing to know about summer league is that it's usually quite bad basketball. oh it is yeah it's a lot of hero ball yeah um yeah everybody's trying to make their mark and you know whatever so yeah i think uh how about um rj uh rj barrett yeah he had a uh, 18 shots i think yeah in four of 18 or something yeah. from the floor it's uh, typically not a great zion was yeah. shooting threes and yeah. stuff. you know it's just like it's it's definitely like it's it's like pickup ball at the y version of nba yeah pretty much yeah. yeah and it's you know it's it's sort of like uh i think actually a, probably a pretty good comp is spring training baseball yeah um if you if you watch and in particular pitchers if you watch pitchers in spring training um, you know, they, they're probably working on, you know, their curveball or they're working on their changeup or they're trying to develop a new pitch or whatever. And so they're throwing that pitch at a time when they wouldn't normally throw it. And then it's getting tatered over the left field wall. And they're just like, oh, well, yeah. you know, what I mean, it's, you know, and the fans are like, oh, my God, like Felix Hurt and Felix may not be the best example anymore. But, you know, it's like, oh, you know, 10 years ago, it'd be like, oh, my God, Felix gave up three home runs. Is Felix in trouble? Has he lost it? And it's like, no, he's like, you know, throwing he threw 18 you know change ups in a row trying to find his pitch you know and so anyway you know zion shooting three I'm, uh, threes i'm sure is part of that you know like trying to get him to to work through that and and get a little more skilled so yeah if you do venture out and watch some summer league basketball just kind of know in advance what it is and uh you know just have a good a good sense that uh uh you're, you're not going to see great basketball um, but you might get to see you know some robert frank's uh doing something special yeah. so maybe frank's will get in there and hoist a few threes yeah and... well you know he's going to i mean look that's what everybody does in these games you know it's yeah. like they, they're all it, there's this balance right they're, they're trying to get noticed while also not appearing entirely selfish right right <laughs> so you know that's whatever it's like i said if you've got a if you've got a viewing interest you know if you're interested in seeing robert frank's great um if it's the summer league team of your favorite nba team then you know great you'll like that um, if you're just a disinterested viewer who's like, look, there's basketball on in the summertime, um, I might actually point you toward the basketball tournament, which we will probably talk about in, in a later episode, uh, because I love the basketball tournament. There's usually a WSU. Yeah, there's usually there. some guys in there. Abe Lodwick was in it a few years ago. Um, the basketball tournament's great. So anyway, yeah, it's it, it's not great basketball and, you know, whatever. So Craig has poured us another beer. Craig, what are we drinking now? Um, so... Um as you may remember, I was in the Midwest uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so one of the 
One of the better breweries in, in uh, Chicago is called Revolution Brewing. Um, uh, funny story about Revolution Brewing. I'll get to it in a sec. But the the um, the beer we are drinking. So they have a, a barrel aged stout that they call Death's Tar. So Jeff, you can see how the death is spelled. Uh, yeah. D E F. D E T H. So it's, it's supposed to sound like Death Star, but they spell it D E F D E F D D E T H. Yes. Space T A uh, apostrophe S T A R. So it's, it looks like Death Star, but this is the coffee version of that beer. So it's called Cafe Death, um, and it is in a can, which is pretty interesting. It's barely just out in a can. I picked up a four pack of cans of this. Um, at the uh, the Binnies in, in wow. Chicago, um, so uh, Revolution is a, p- a fairly sizable brewery. If you're in Chicago, you definitely see their anti-hero IPA pretty much everywhere. Um, the funny thing is there um, there's a movie. Uh, actually, one of my uh, just uh, favorite, just chilling out, not doing much, watching movies is called Drinking Buddies. Um, it's got. Um, one uh, Olivia Wilde in it, um, who is gorgeous and wonderful, and then um, <laughs> and uh, I can't remember uh, Jake uh, Johnson. He's from uh, more f- most famously from New Girl, I think. Uh, um, he's Nick in New Girl, and so he it's a it's a movie called uh, it's Mumblecore. So basically, the almost the entire movie is um, uh, just m- made up on the fly. Um, a lot of the, they, they basically just set up scenarios. Uh, it's got some, uh, got some, uh, uh, good characters in it. And it's basically just about these employees that work at revolution brewing in Chicago. And when I had, I lived in Vermont when I first saw it and I did not know, uh, that, uh, revolution brewing was a real brewery. Um, so, um, when I went to Chicago the first you time, it was just like, like a movie brewery. Yeah. So when I went to Chicago for the first time, um, in, uh, Uh, late 2013 uh when i started working for the company that was based in chicago um i get off i get off the train i was staying at a friend's house i get off the train stop by his house and the first thing i see when i get off is a revolution brewing truck and like my was was like wait (laughs) you're like holy shit that's a real brewery (laughs) that actually exists like i guess that makes sense watching the movie i'm like they set up a whole lot of branding and all that so yeah you're getting the full experience with the sirens coma experience coma experience um so yeah um but revolution they um they make a lot of like core beers that you'll see everywhere in uh in Chicago, but they also have a really good barrel program. Um, yeah, I can verify because bar- I've tasted the beer already. Yeah, so barley wines they do really well, but this is their barrel aged stout, and they've moved to like putting them in these uh um in these cans, and they sell them four pack cans, and and like this beer has been out since November, and you you could still find it in a store, so. They make so much of it that it's like fairly accessible. So it's kind of like the Fremont brewing of the yeah. of Chicago where they have a bunch of stuff you get everywhere. Yeah. And then when they make barrel aged stuff, it's actually reasonably easy to find because they make so much of it. If I'm sure if Fremont put their um barrel aged stuff in four pack cans, it'd even be even easier to find. But yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure it would. But, but yeah, so that they definitely like if if you were to think of a, a Northwest brewery that does a similar model, I, I would definitely um, um, say that the Revolution is kind of like the uh, Chicago's version of Fremont Brewing. Yeah. Um, where you, you but although I, I think that their uh, core stuff is better than I, I think that Anti Hero IPA is better than Interurban IPA, but that that may be controversial. How know. dare you? I know. Um, but uh, Jeff, uh, go ahead and talk about what you think of this beer. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna drink some of it. So this is uh, this is dangerous, dude. Because like, um, so when I first you know kind of put the nose on it, um, it smelled a little boozy, right? So I, I that was before you had explained what it was, and so I just kind of smelled it, and or sniffed it. I don't know what's what's proper. Is smell like is that a little too? Is that a little too like? low like a little no, too low brow smell, okay right. smell all right so, I, so you, say, I, you talk about the nose yeah the nose um anyway definitely kind of boozy on the nose but then when you take a taste um you know the bourbon is is pretty muted um and not as not as strong as i expected based off of the the way it smelled and so um it does say that it is uh it is what it's a brewed with a weaponized amount of of coffee beans um, the coffee definitely didn't kind of get the coffee at first. Um, the more I've got, the more sips I've had, I'm kind of getting more of the coffee. And it's definitely like it's uh, it was canned seven 
eight months ago. Okay. So I, I'm sure that some of the coffee mellowing. will fade a little yeah. bit. But it's uh that's damn near fifteen percent. Yep. Which is uh definitely does not taste like a fifteen percent beer, which you, as I said, that's why it, it could be dangerous. You have to drive back, so I, I, do. I gave me myself the uh, yeah. the lion's share yeah, of the good pour. choice. Good choice. Um, but uh, and I'll, I'll definitely be uh, sipping on this for a while. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I figured this is one that could uh, t- take us through. Um, but yeah, it's got this uh, interesting can. Um, so there, it's it's like this uh, uh, skeleton dude. He's holding like a, I would say like a coffee cup, and uh, Revolution Brewery, and they like to use a lot of like um, stars and red flags imagery. Uh, so it's a pretty interesting can. It's very interesting that they can all their barrel aged stuff. Yeah, uh, that's pretty um, unique. Uh, but yeah, it. it I love it. Uh, another four pack I picked up is their straight jacket barrel aged barley wine, which is fantastic and actually way cheaper than this beer. Um, so, uh, um, I, 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 I contemplated getting two four packs of the straight jacket and one four, and then no four packs of this. I was, I was running out of time <laughs> and space in my suitcase. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I ended up getting the, um, this one. I'm glad I did. It's very tasty. Yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah. I guess we're not doing ratings. We forgot to do ratings. Earlier. We did forget to do ratings. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, no whatever. one really cares. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. I think, I think saying this is totally good and I would buy it and drink it again. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, and truthfully, so it was. So you think a four pack of cans, it's uh, forty eight bucks or forty eight um, ounces. Yep. Four pack of twelve counts. So this was thirty six bucks for a four pack. Okay. So usually a coffee barrel aged stout is running around. Like a good one yeah. is usually around a dollar an ounce. Yeah. So this is actually like cheaper. Like so, like Fremont Coffee Barrel Age KDS or co- Barrel Age KDS with coffee is uh, usually around twenty two bucks for a twenty two right, ounce bottle. For a bomber, yeah. So this is actually a better deal when they put it in these cans yeah. than than uh, a, a lot of that. And plus, you get like a, a I like these smaller serving sizes. Yeah. Because honestly, like if this was in a twenty two ounce bottle, I'm probably not busting it out for us to drink no. at. at it, what, it's like uh, twelve o'clock, right? Um, like it's noon, and we haven't eaten lunch yet, right? Like so that that would uh, that that would not have been a good idea. But you know, I can give me eight ounces and you four ounces, and yeah, and and, and you can handle it. No, and, it's and we'll be fine. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, so I, I I like these. I like this format. Um, cans are actually uh, the the can technology has ad- advanced quite a bit. Um, a lot of that was in due in part to. Uh, Oscar Blues Brewing in, uh, in in Colorado, they kind of introduced craft canning, essentially. Um, but now a lot the can technology is so you can actually like let these things sit for a while. You're not going to get an aluminum taste on them. You can let them age. Like because this has been sitting in this can for eight months, and I don't taste any no, aluminum. I don't taste anything. Not. They have a lining in them. Yep. Um, it's I think pretty sure it's BPA free, all that stuff. So you don't have to worry about. It's it. probably healthy for whatever you. the hell BPA is. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, so um, the canning uh, canning is cheaper than bottling for uh, the breweries, so they get to cut off some of the costs there. Um, and yeah, honestly, like you don't have to worry about. Uh, so before in this series, they put them in boxes, um, so they had a box and a bottle, and you know all that stuff. So now they're just putting in cans, and they put the cans in a box, obviously, to or whatever. But but it's definitely a lot less packaging and and yeah. Um, well, and it's less weight to transport. Yeah, less weight right? to definitely weight. And I mean, I was appreciative of that like when huge. I was taking it back in my suitcase. Yeah. Although cans kind of stress me out because they because can they can't yeah, yeah, and they can explode. Yeah. Um. But uh. But it definitely was a lot lighter and and I wouldn't you know I probably would have bought one bottle of of Cafe Death and one bottle of the barley wine. But now I get you know well I gave. I gave one each of the four pack to a friend, but but uh, but uh, I, now I get to try them three times instead of Yay. trying once, and and I don't have to get shit faced to try yeah. once. Yeah. Um. So yeah, good good. Um, I'm loving the the, the canning, um, trend, uh, and uh, I'm more of it. This is a uh, you know both of our beers that we've had today are in cans, and it's a beautiful thing. And yeah. Um. Way to go, Revolution. Um. Your awesome beer if you're in Chicago. Uh, they have two tap rooms. Highly recommend checking them out. Uh, their beer is also available almost anywhere. Uh, get on Untapped if you want to try one a particular beer of theirs. Uh, just search for it on Untapped, and you might, you know, just find it. Um, uh, untapped is used pretty heavily in Chicago. A lot of the good bur- bars and breweries use it. Um, so um, just get on there. Search. You can do search by location and yep. just find it. And 
but yeah, so uh, um, they have they have good food at that uh, at their they have a they have a, a basically a protection facility that has a tap room, and then they have a a restaurant that has food. Um, so um, I highly recommend it. One of my buddies lives in the it's in the Logan Square area of Chicago, and one of my buddies lives there. So we I went there with him, and we got they had a bunch of these barrel aged shit on draft, and I just got really drunk. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but yeah, so uh, Revolution Brewing canned barrel aged stouts the wave of the future yeah uh who needs wax who needs fancy bottling no sun can get to it and ruin it not me Um, so yeah so yeah we're enjoying that and now uh what i wanted to talk about we're we're just be our nba episode yeah um so last night uh, as of when we're recording this last night was finally the the Kawhi leonard decision yeah at about eleven thirty. p.m Just sort of the Pacific last time. major domino to fall yeah. in the nba free agency yeah which he caused more dominoes um another domino that we weren't expecting but an awesome one. but an awesome one so Kawhi, you know a bit surprisingly um so signed with the uh the steve bombers yeah, I mean, because uh, everybody thought it was down to Toronto and, and the Lakers. Well, if you listen to Steve Broussard, that's right. Um, but uh, but yeah, but yeah. So he signs with the Clips, uh, the famously inept, joke of a franchise, right? inept Clips, who who have obviously had some good years um, recently. But Mo, uh, Paul and obviously the Paul and uh, Blake Griffin days are over. Um, but now they have a new era uh, with Kawhi, obviously, who is one of the top three players in the yep. league maybe um, maybe the top maybe the top possibly uh, you know lebron's older now yep um and and who knows what durant's gonna look like after yep. that uh yep after that uh, uh tendon heals but um or is replaced <laughs> yeah um but uh but yeah so um Kawhi obviously makes you legit immediately um because what they had in toronto they had Kawhi and kyle lowry and just a good deep bench but yeah uh but in in the clippers uh so what was the surprise thing after at eleven thirty pacific time we found out eleven thirty p.m um pacific time we found out that i guess it was more about 11 and then about eleven thirty, we find out that um the clippers have had traded for paul george um it was it was advertised as a record amount of draft picks um yeah. to to the thunder for Paul George, um, uh, so the Thunder, uh, the Clippers, looking like immediate title contenders next year now, because uh, you have two v- very good two-way players, and which I, I hate that term, but but it's what people. But like it's to important. Say. But yeah, so you have two very good defensive and offensive players um, in Paul George. Uh, Paul George, who knows? He's you know he's older. He's had a major injury himself, but he can't bounce back from it very well yeah um it took him a you know a couple years but he did um but uh but you know he's probably got a couple more years at least of of production and Kawhi's in the prime of his career so you you kind of expect the clippers to be you know contending for the title and at least for the next couple years and (laughs) i want you to think about what you just said craig i know (laughs) (laughs) the clippers are going to be contending for a title i mean even when it was chris paul and blake griffin yeah they they were like you're, you're still just like yeah, the I Spurs mean, they're still and, the Clippers. Yeah. Like, yeah, the I Spurs mean, and the Mavs back then, right. and, and yeah, it was just they weren't gonna. They, they, I think they got to a conference finals once. Yeah, I think they famously could not get out of the first round for a long time. Right. Um. But yeah. So. Um. But yeah. So it's yeah the Clippers of all teams. Uh. Probably I've already seen people putting them pick, taking them first in the West, which is you know. You know totally like, reasonable. Totally and also reasonable. Bonkers. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, like it's it's crazy, and and because they're going to be a, a good defensive team and a and a very good offensive team, and and I don't know. I think the NBA season is going to be fun. Uh, now having these, the West is stacked as usual, but yeah. But now the stat, it's you know, there's four or five teams in the West who are very good, and then one team that just got way way worse. Yeah, I mean that's you know, and I imagine a lot of our listeners are. Um, you know, not NBA fans in the either either a they they're not NBA fans just because they don't particularly care for the NBA, or they are, you know, like uh, Sonics fans yeah. who, um, you know, feel like jilted lovers, uh, you know, because our team left. Um, but you know, I'm you and I both are such basketball fans just in general that 
um, you know, we we still enjoy watching the NBA, and, and it and really Clay is, definitely Clay being Clay amazing helps. definitely helps. Yeah, that helps a ton, right? So you you know, not and not just Clay being good, but Clay being on the best team yeah. that's on TV, you yeah. know, basically fifty times a year. Yeah. Um, you know, all of those things make life a lot easier for, for a casual fan who doesn't have his own team, you know, like us. Um, but it really is, you know, sometimes I hear people say, oh, I just, I just don't like, you know, the style of basketball in the NBA, you know, whatever. Um, which, you know, is really just another way to say like, you like, you don't like the best basketball on the planet, which is, you know, sort of crazy to me because it really is. And, you know, if you spend any time at all watching it. Um, you, you cannot with any kind of intellectual honesty, um, evaluate it as being a worse product than college basketball. You can say you like college basketball, you, which we obviously both yeah. love college basketball, um, love what it has to offer. We love, um, you know, some of the crazy randomness of college because college basketball players do stupid shit yeah. all the time. Yeah. Right. And I mean, that's part of the allure, right? If you watch any of the NCAA tournament, you're like, what the hell? You know, the, an end of game situation. You're like, what in the hell was that guy doing? Why did he do that? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking back to uh, what was it? New Mexico State, right? Where the guy seemed to have a clear layup to tie the game, yep. throws it out to the three. You're just like, what the hell are you doing? You know, anyway, they just they do. St- and part of that, that randomness is part of the entertainment. Um, but if you're talking about just pure basketball skill. You know, you can't now you you can say and and I do, you know, I don't necessarily disagree with this. Um, And in fact, you know, Kyle Smith, when I interviewed Kyle Smith, we talked about this just kind of briefly about, you know, the Rockets and what they do. And, uh, you know, they're very ISO heavy offense. You know, if you're not sort of familiar with the with the jargon, ISO just means one guy with lots of space to operate doing what he does and everybody else is kind of standing around watching them to space the floor. James Harden does that. He puts a ball on the floor and he's either going to take his guy to the basket or he's going to step back for a three or he's going to try and draw a foul. And it's been a very um, efficient thing for the Rockets to do. And I I would agree that that is not very aesthetically pleasing basketball. Um, But, you know, when you watch other teams like, you know, it's it's not like that's the only way people play. It's one of the reasons why Golden State can be really fun. You know, they move the ball. Steph Curry doing just, you know, wizard like things with the ball. Um, You know, all of that. The NBA really is uh, a great product. So for me, it's 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 cool and fun and exciting. And plus, you know, the movement of one or two guys can completely shift the league. I read a thing from Zach Lowe at ESPN this morning. Um, just talking about how Kawhi choosing the Clippers has had like this ripple effect and has just shifted the league. Um, I don't, you know, there's not another sport on the planet where or one, one guy can change yeah. everything. Well, if you think, yeah, if you think about if, if Kawhi picks the Lakers, the Lakers right. have the super team for the next four years. Oh, and, yeah. They've got and, three I mean, of the five ish best it's, players in yeah, the league it's on Lakers one Lakers versus the field. And yeah, that like it, but. But he picks the Clippers, and suddenly, and and now, um, you know, Paul George, who apparently uh, was discontented with his uh, star teammate in Oklahoma City, um, was wanting to move, and the Clippers obviously uh, spent a lot of draft capital. Um, but yeah, so by the way, seven first round draft picks. Yeah, seven first round draft picks. <laughs> so that's a very. I think that's a very. Um, well, it's not quite seven. Five first round draft picks and two of those years they have the right to swap with the right. Clippers. So if the Clippers have a higher or sorry, if the uh, if the Clippers have a higher draft pick than they do, then they can swap and get a higher pick. So So anyway. the the idea probably from the Clippers is that those picks will be in the twenties. Yeah. Because they 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 should be good and they should be, you know, in the playoffs, they should be getting deep in the playoffs. They, those shouldn't be great first. Because yeah. there's a huge difference in the NBA from a top ten pick to a even top 20, top five yeah. to ten. The, the difference between like five or four or three yeah. Like probably I think most drafts have maybe three guys. Yeah. Like that are you can sort of nail down as being awesome and then the difference from sometimes from three to five can be big like i think it was this year yeah. right and then the difference from between like five and ten is huge and ten to twenty is like even bigger yeah so and then when you get 20 to 30 right so, it's, yeah, it's, you're sort of taking flyers on guys or trying to find guys that fill a specific need so like and sometimes you'll find a guy like Kawhi later in the rounds that end up being i mean i think he was just undervalued for a number of reasons yeah. but but uh, we followed him in, uh, in, college. in college, and 
you knew he was a fucking stud. Part of it yeah. was weren't sure where he was going to play. He was almost yeah. kind of a power forward at San yes. Diego State. Yeah, yeah, and he was like six seven, and so right. it, was, it didn't make sense. Monster in the NBA, but you know, in the NBA, they have that that wing position where it's just your best player. Yeah, like, and that's that's what it is. Yeah. It's it's where a six eleven guy like Durant or a six seven guy like Leonard right. plays. Like, right, and so you just have it, that, and I think you're seeing that come to college at the major schools more, but but like. But I, 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 it's hard. It's it's hard to ascribe college positions to right. NBA players right. a lot. Yep. Um, but yeah. So yeah. Uh, but you did mention that neither of us have a team, but we actually both have a team. <laughs> we both have a team, and, and and that team is whoever is playing the whoever Oklahoma. Whoever is playing Oklahoma, but actually City. Oklahoma City Thunder. But actually, what it really is is. The t- it's on the team of wanting the most pain yeah. for Oklahoma City. Maximum pain. Maximum pain. Yeah. All so times. so in that respect, um, this is awesome because, you know, Paul George. So there's kind of conflicting reports out there that, that George was discontented with uh, playing next to Russell Westbrook. I mean, there are. Um, I mean, who I'm, the fuck wants to play at Oklahoma City? Yeah, yeah. that too. Um, but, it, it, there, the, you know, there were metrics that uh, valued Paul George as actually better. Than right. Russell Westbrook. Now Westbrook gets the triple doubles, whatever, because he's a very he's a, what we call a high usage player, right? The ball's always in his hands. He's always doing stuff. Either he's taking a shot, or he's assisting, or he's turning it over, or whatever. They definitely run the sort of, uh, you know, box. Like there's a there's a way there's a rebounding philosophy you can do where your bigs don't chase the boards. Right. They, they box, box out, out, and then and then you have your athletic Dudes guards crash down. Crash. The guards crash down. And and if you've watched any amount of the Thunder, they definitely do that. So. Westbrook gets a lot of those like yep. those boards that way, but like not saying like Westbrook is an excellent player, but he's definitely that type of player that um, he's got that style of game that if you have another superstar, it can it cannot meld well. Right, right, because the ball is going to be in his hands, and so um, you know this ended up you know the, another report I saw was just that Paul George just saw this as an opportunity. I mean he he just recently resigned. With them, because yeah, uh, that was a big deal. Yeah, Oklahoma City traded for him under the same circumstances that Toronto traded for Kawhi, no which was just George just one there. year yeah. left on the deal. Hopefully, we can convince him to stick around. Um, and so that's what Oklahoma City did. So they felt great about that. And then uh, apparently, Kawhi called up Paul George and recruited him and said, "Hey, come out to Los Angeles with me. Ask for a trade. Figure out a way to get out here." Um, and he did. And so Oklahoma City's left with Russell Westbrook and Stephen Adams and. A whole bunch of trash befitting of their trash city, and um, we will be super excited to watch them suck. The last thing I saw on Twitter was that uh, Russell Westbrook was now exploring a trade. So uh, I, w- sure I would love it if those fans get uh, get to see a yeah. burn it to the ground philosophy, like uh, basically what Clay Bennett did here, um, trying to trying to yeah. sabotage the team and let's make it as bad your, as possible. Uh, let's see how your fan support and yeah. attendance is. So let's you see how many to, people show up when your team is winning twenty five games. Oklahoma City fans games. have always liked to hold it over us because the attendance in the final season yeah, when when we bad. were intentionally tanking when we had a nineteen year old skinny rookie right. it was our best player and 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 here's the other thing too the um i have a f- one of my friends a guy who who's a coog uh mike mike larson if you're listening hi there uh mike was working for the uh for the sonics at the time right. as, a, as a season ticket uh seller guy and which actually provided a nice opportunity for me because he always had like extra comp tickets he could yeah. hand out if i wanted to come up to a game um but you know i i mean look like he you know he would tell me about how they just like weren't even trying like they just like he was just like on his own to do basically they just like didn't even care if he it did definitely anything. it served their narrative like they were MP. better off if he didn't do his job yeah yeah, it you served know? their narrative to move like, oh, they don't want this. Yeah, team of course. Anymore. Like, look, there's ten thousand people at this game. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, they they don't even want the team anymore. And it's just like, anyway, like they had pulled. I mean, I'm sure we're talking to a lot of people who live in the Seattle area, but um, they weren't even really advertising for the team. No, they yeah. didn't. You know, they didn't make players available for uh, radio or TV interviews. Uh, that was yeah. another thing that they did was nothing, nothing beyond just general post game media availability. Yeah, we got very little of Durant. It in was. That. Yep. In that final, and that's one season he was yep. here. It was it, it was a deliberate sabotage thing, and so, um, you know, what I would love is for Oklahoma, because here's what kind of pisses me off about Oklahoma City um, and their fans in particular. Look, like like I get they wanted a team. Like I don't, 
When they had the they had the Hornets, <laughs> they had the Hornets Horn Pelicans. Eventually yeah, come, but they had them. They after showed Katrina out Katrina, and they showed out. For they them. showed out, so that was great. And I mean, I get them wanting a team. Like, I, obviously, I want my team back, right? So, so I understand that they want their team. Like that, they want a team. Like, I totally get that, especially in Oklahoma City. I mean, there just ain't shit else there. Yeah. You know, I mean, they don't have a football team. They don't have a hockey team. They don't have a baseball team. Uh, you know, there's there's the Sooners are. I mean, I don't even know how close Norman is to there, but I don't think it's that close. I think it's about an hour. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, anyway. So, it's like, look, you know, that's what they've got. And they wanted a pro franchise. Okay, fine. That's great. I get it. What I hated was sort of the, the smug, you know, and again, maybe, you know, Twitter is not the best uh, – representation of a fan base because uh, sometimes I see, you know, Seattle fans or whatever. But I will say that they were incredibly smug about their uh, procurement of an NBA franchise. And the reality is they were really, really lucky to get what they got. They got a team that, um, you know, had Kevin Durant already. They got a team with a smart general well, manager. And Russell Westbrook, they drafted So him. they drafted Russell. Now, at that point, it was a fait accompli. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they, the team was already gone. I mean, they got – I mean, they, the the one thing Clay Bennett did really well is hire Sam Presti. Sam Presti, right. Who I, got, I wish that he had was – Had been here. Had been here earlier. Yep. And, and, what you know, because people will say that, like, oh, that team should have been our team, like the Westbrook Harden. Yeah. But the thing is, that team would have not have been – like, if, if – it like – if without the Oklahoma City leadership group, like they wouldn't have been that right. The, the Seattle wouldn't have torn the team down to that point to try right. to build it the right. way they did. Right. So I never, I never have that sort of lament that like, oh, we should have had that because that was, you know, the one thing. Obviously, that's, Presti only gets hired because yeah, Clay Bennett yeah. is the owner, yeah, and the Sonics whatever. had just a, a lot of really terrible. Uh, they still would have had Durant. Front office, yeah. Still would have had Durant because that would have been. That, I mean, yeah, yeah they still, still would have had that number Durant. two pick. Like that would have been. They they still would have had Durant at least. Yeah, so. they still would have had Durant because Schultz was Schultz was effectively tearing the team down just through front office incompetence. Right. Um. But uh. But so maybe we'd have got to that point. But I have, I, I have no belief that Schultz would have properly managed the team. So you know, it would have been more like hopefully he would have sent it to. You know, like sold it to a guy like Bomber, who, yeah. <laughs> which they tried to do at the last second, but yeah. it didn't work. But, but anyway, anyways, we're rehashing old wounds. Yeah. But anyways, but what what's most important now is um, hashtag never OKC. Yep. And the most amount of pain inflicted on the maximum Thunder. maximum pain. I hope that team gets torn down to the studs. I hope they win I, fifteen I ho- games. I hope they're. I hope um, all these uh, millions of draft. You know, twenty in number twenty eight draft picks don't work out. And um, I hope that they have, you know, several years of just shitty basketball. And then when their attendance dips, I, I will gladly, um, yeah, point I, it out. gladly point it out to them yeah. that it's not fun watching no. uh, a shitty basketball team. Yeah, I mean, they, they walked around like their shit don't stink for however long. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, I mean, good luck when your team is terrible. Let's see how let's see how well you show out. When your team is not good and nobody wants to play for you, like really, what I see for them in the future is is the Sacramento Kings. Well, like yeah. that's what I see. Who also Who were headed to Seattle. Also were headed to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> headed to Seattle. And get what they oh, deserve. Man. They've spent for a big arena, and their team is still horrible. So yeah, whatever. Because no, I mean, who like Seattle um, is definitely not. You know, it's not L.A. It's not New York. It's uh, but I, I think. I, I'm thinking about this era of Seattle, and I think it would have been very attractive to oh, um, yeah. players. And oh. you think about a lot of players that play for the Sonics and the yeah. Mariners that have just like never left, never left. And, and, and Nick Collison, when he moved to Oklahoma City with the team, still kept his home in, the in Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, Ugh. And he's anyway. still like you know he's a big he and he still lives here. Yeah. And, and and a lot of players are like that. You know, uh, you know guys like Jay Buhner. Uh, that's why you know the Mariners. You see all their freaking old dudes like come yeah. back because they they love living in you know they all live in like Sammamish and Issaquah yeah, like, yeah. on the lake or whatever. Yeah. But that I mean hell you know they don't I imagine they don't have something like that in Oklahoma City. Um, also, they definitely it's a don't. much more cosmopolitan city, much yeah. more stuff going on, a much larger city. Yep. Um, it's a coastal city. Um, it's you know it's uh, if you if you're a if you're a hunting and fishing dude, you can you can have fun if you're. Yeah. A, if you're a big city life dude and partying and yep. you can have fun. And, and, but yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, um, 
But it's, 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 it sucks. And when I'm watching this last night and I'm like, this is so much fun. The NBA off season is so much fun. Yeah. And I wish that we were involved in some way. Well, and, and when we do get our team, cause we will, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that we will. I don't know how, I yeah. don't know when and we may be, you know, I hope my, I hope my kids aren't in college by the time it happens. But, um, when we do, I think we have a good chance to be, um, uh, you know, be a part of, of that sort of, cause basically what you see in the NBA right now is the players have a lot of agency. Right. They get a lot of uh, influence over where they end up eventually. Obviously, they don't have any influence over where they start, uh, but they have some influence where they end up eventually. And right now what you're seeing with this agency is, man, they are ending up in uh, basically your your coastal rich cities. They're right. ending up in Los Angeles. They're ending up in San Francisco slash Oakland. They're ending up in Miami uh, and they're ending up in Brooklyn <laughs> or Boston. Right. I mean, right. these are the teams that are able to now Boston obviously struck out during this off season, and that's maybe a totally different deal. But, um, you know, and the Knicks are obviously what they are, which is a total disaster. Well, that's just but that's front office but competence. that's just exactly front office incompetence there. Nobody wants to play for them. Um, so, you know, you see these teams in, in these cities where players are like, yeah, I want to go there. And I realize Seattle's not Los Angeles. You know, right. um, Seattle's not Miami. I get that. Seattle's not New York, but but I do think a lot. So it very obvious with LeBron James, like moving to LA was about much more than basketball. Obviously, it was yeah. about business opportunities. Well, it, was, it was like that for Shaq when yeah. Shaq went out and there. And so too. Seattle is a place that does offer business opportunities yep. now. Obviously, it's not on the you know the level of like uh, entertainment like uh, LA offers. Um, Obviously, that's not what Kawhi was looking for, but he was just looking to get back to SoCal, I think. Which and, is where he's from. Yeah, he's like, he from was a SoCal. guy who actually did... Like, people talk about, oh, players want to go home. He was actually a guy, I think, who did want to go home. Yeah, his. I mean, what we know of his personality is that he's not your typical superstar. And and, and so it now that you're looking back, like, yeah, he he went with the Clippers. It makes sense. Like, he went he went with the team that's on the, you know, the back page, not the team that's on the front page. And... and and uh and frankly they're better run than the Lakers right now. And honestly, he he brought Toronto a title and if he brings the Clippers a title oh. like that dude is just like fucking goat dude, forever. Dude, with Clay with a busted up knee, I am number 1 Clippers fan this year. Oh yeah. Like I want them to win I've a championship. Did, yeah. I want them to win a championship so bad now cuz I'm like I mean just imagine imagine these headlines, right? Imagine all the all the narratives, all the storylines, right? Okay. So you take okay, Kawhi Leonard brings a championship to his third franchise. Right. Right? I mean, does that cement him as I mean, it really you start asking is is he one of the greatest players ever at that point, right? You know, he, he went he did it in San Antonio, taken over basically taken over for you know the the legacy guys of, you know, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, you know, Monte Ginobili, right? And then he goes to Toronto for one damn year, right? Puts them over the top. And then he goes to the Clippers, one of the least successful franchises in the history of the NBA. Of major sports. Of major sports, right? And turns them into a, a championship team. And then as a bonus, <laughs> right, he had turned down the Lakers to go to the Clippers. Yeah. And then that would LeBron mean, James, right? So this is a zero sum Anthony calculation. Davis. So if he's winning a title, that means LeBron James and Anthony Davis are not winning a title. And Anthony Davis wanted to go to LA specifically to play with LeBron. Right. And they, you know, they, they probably assume they could bring in that third guy. Yeah. You know, they're like, Oh, well, of course somebody's going to want to come and play. Kawhi. For, Kawhi's going to come back. Yeah. Gonna, somebody's going to want to play with LeBron Cl James and Anthony Davis and nobody. Yeah, he's not going to go to the Clippers. Did. He's not going to go to the Clippers. He wants to play for the Clippers. Kawhi's Frankie his Munoz own dude, in man. the stands, or yeah. you want Jack Nicholson? In the Kawhi's his own dude. It's yeah. awesome. And I'm I'm totally here for this era of the NBA. I think it's going to be fun. Um, I'm bummed that oh, the Clay, West is wide open. Clay is not going to probably play until probably March or something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but imagine if the Warriors sneak into the playoffs, right? They like they will. I think they will too. There's and you so still much have parody Draymond in the West. And, and, yeah. and you still and have Steph and Steph. Like that's yep. good enough. Yep. That's better than I mean yep. Steph is still a one of the yep. best players in the NBA. If he can, if he can stay upright, that that's the big thing. If yeah. he can stay on the floor, well now yeah, if that's Steph, gonna be the challenge. If if those ankles uh right. don't hold up then and because he's only getting older. Yep. Uh the Warriors could be in for a super downfall, but yep. But uh but I think they might 
now that Durant is, you know, off the payroll, they might actually be able to build some depth. Now we're going to see, you know, maybe they can try to re- reclaim that, you know, that 2015 type team that was yeah. less about, it was about Steph and, and, but it was less about, it was kind of pre clay superstar status. Yeah. And I mean, that's what made him a superstar, but yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I, you know, the NBA it's going to be fun are, to watch. The NBA playoffs are fun to watch. Yeah. The NBA regular season is not that fun to watch. Honestly, I don't see any not. team being, I, I don't see any team dominating. You know, I don't see any team being, you know, way ahead. Obviously things can get weird and injuries can happen or whatever, but I think that there's enough talent spread around that the West, I mean, the Utah jazz, like they're going to be really, really, really yeah, damn they, good. They, they're, so. they're like, they were low key. Awesome. This year, the nuggets too. Yep. Um, so like you have to put them in there. Like the West has been for my entire adult and life. Like since, I mean, honestly, like you look back, even when the bulls were dominating, the East was kind of shitty then too, but like yep. probably since in the, like this kind of modern era of NBA, this post CBA stuff in the late nineties, like it's been, the West has been dominant. Cause I yep. remember when the Sonics were definitely on their downturn, they were still better than a lot of teams in the East, but they would you know there'd be like teams in the east with 10 games under 500 making the playoffs right and like, but like the west is again you know that dominant obviously because brooklyn's not going to be anything next year because durant's not going to play next year right like so there but uh, you but that's going to be super fun the year after yeah when you have durant and Kyrie, and and then you have uh you know they're probably going to be they're going to be like you know the team coming out of the east and then you were going to have some fun finals and yeah, it's it's we're definitely in for a, a really fun era of the NBA. Uh, there's a lot of good players, man. There's so many good yeah. players. Like it's it's I, I think that the the strength of you know the the like everyone worries about the superstars, you know, tilting the balance. But we saw this year that um, if it's you know in you know one injury can uh, I mean if it was two, but uh, one injury can just you yeah. know can take Change down everything. a team and yep. and. There are no guarantees. Yeah, and yeah, there was no guarantee. I mean, but plus, like, um, having Kawhi on the Raptors. Uh, obviously, I think if if LeBron was still out East, that would have been a rough series for. Uh, it would have been interesting to see LeBron and Kawhi going at it in the East. That would have been fun. But but now it's going to be fun watching them LeBron going at and it Kawhi in Los out. Angeles. Yeah, yeah it's going to be. It's going to be rad. Yeah, it's definitely oh, going to be exciting. Rad. Like it's going to be cool. Um. So yeah, uh, get your NBA League Pass subscriptions. No, yeah. Don't don't do that. Yeah, I wouldn't do that either. There's yeah. enough games on TV. <laughs> yeah, there are so many games on TV on TNT and ESPN and yep. TBS. And You're going to get more LeBron and Kawhi than you can possibly imagine. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to watch the if you want to watch Giannis, then maybe get your uh, yeah. league pass subscription. Because yeah. also, Giannis plays in fucking Milwaukee. Yeah. He's like, he probably won't play there very long. But, Not for much longer, yeah. I don't think. But, uh, yeah, there's so many fun players. Uh, if I was like, I think back at, at this era, I remember how into I was in the NBA when I was like 11. With, um, so like I was like 1996. And, and just like, I just knew all, like there was all these fun players, you know, back then it was like, Penny Hardaway and and you know uh, uh, Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning, like things like that. But I just think like the depth of like just legit amazing players there are now. Like it's crazy, it's crazy, and it's so it's a cool league. Um, I'm it's taken me a long time to get back into it because uh, because of the Sonics, and I'm still also hate the league a little bit all the time because of it. Yeah. Um. But uh. But I love basketball. Basketball is my first sports love, and and. And please just give us a team back. Give us the so, Sonics back. Please. Yeah. Please. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, you got any good kid stories this week? Well, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about it. I'll, I'll let you. Uh, or, are you ready? I know, sure. I know you said yeah. you had one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, okay. So, yesterday, two days ago was the 4th of July, right? Yes, it was. So, we got, we got 4th of July happening. And uh, so, in my family... Uh, we typically don't do fireworks. Um, we typically go, so we live, we live out in Graham, Washington, which is, a a, a little, a little known town on the way out to Doxon Eatonville. Himself. Yeah. Which is another little known town on the way out to Mount Rainier, which is, is basically the deal. Um, but Eatonville has a, uh, has a fireworks show, a traditional fireworks show on the 3rd of July every year, which is actually perfect. You do it that night, you sleep in the next day. It's, it's great. Um, 
And so then on the fourth, so we went out there on the third, and that's typically how we do it. We watch the big fireworks show out there. The city does it. It's it's great. They they pack out at the um, the elementary school. People sit on the field, and and it's great. It does take like thirty five minutes to get out of this dinky little town that's got two roads, three roads out, two roads back to civilization. The other one oh, heads yeah. out to the mountain. But yeah. uh, but it was great. Many times. Yeah. So. Uh, on the fourth, we had some family over and uh, I smoked ribs uh, for everybody. And yes. yeah, which we're about to have. We're about to have leftovers of the ribs for lunch because I made way too many ribs. Sorry, so, listeners. You don't get any. Ribs. Yeah, sorry. Um, and so, you know, it's had some family over. Well, one of one of Sarah's uncles is like, oh, hey, I'm going to bring over some fireworks for the kids. And now here's the thing. I, I don't have a philosophical, generally, um, opposition to fireworks. Um they're really expensive yes. and to me it feels like lighting my money on fire. Now, your mileage may vary. You know, I, I know there are people who it love it depends on the enjoyment you get out of lighting. It. Sure. And and I know there are people who love lighting fireworks. Like we went to uh some friends who lived on a lake and uh, and they did a massive fireworks show uh <laughs> for everybody who was there. They had a floating dock off of the off of the shore where they put all of the fireworks and so they're spending like 10 grand. Yeah. They spent, show. I don't know how many thousands of dollars yeah. on these. I'm serious. Like it was insane. And to me, I'm like, I can never get around what else I could do with that money <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, I just, I can't to me, like I said, it, it's like dumping gas on a pile of cash and just lighting it on fire. Yeah, like it's I, all relative. Like this can of beer was totally, $9. 100%. Like, and so there's a lot of people that'd be like, you spent nine, $9 on a dude, can of beer. That would have been me five years ago. Yeah. Like you spent $9 on a can of beer. Um, so, so I get it. Like this isn't, this is like no judgment, yeah. right? This is not like you suck. If you spend money on fireworks, it's just like, it's just not my thing. Right. Unless I just, you I can, light shit on fire. Yeah. I can never then get around. I'll judge you. Okay. So Sarah's uncle says, Hey, I'm, I'm bringing fireworks for the boys. And I'm like, fine. I'm not paying for them. Whatever. Okay. So he brings them over and some of them, and he's had them sitting around. Uh, he bought them a few years ago. They've just been sitting around. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you can see where this is going, right? Yeah. So they've been sitting around for a few years because, you know, his kids are, are kind of grown up now and they just did, you know, last time they didn't blow them all up. So he's like, here, I've got these and, and we'll shoot them. And, and he's got this, you know, PVC pipe that he uses for the, um, for whatever you call it, the, the mortar launcher. Right. And, uh, so, you know, he's there and, and we light off some firecrackers and whatever. And, and what I start to see is, is my 12 year old. Um, by the way, this is my 12 year old who, when he was younger, was terrified of fireworks. I would take him to Seahawks games and they would light off fireworks at the end of the national anthem. And he would like crawl under his seat and start crying because it was too loud. He had a hard time. OK, so my oldest son now is like uh, he looks like a, a little pyro because he's like <laughs> he sees these fireworks, you know, firecrackers, whatever. And he's very except bottle rockets. You know, he's very excited about these about these different things that, that Sarah's uncle has brought over for us to blow up. OK, so we blow up a few things, whatever. We don't do, you know, a whole ton of them. We're all pretty tired. We'd stayed up late the night before. OK, so they go stay the night. My kids go stay the night at their grandpa's house because they like to do that for a treat. They come back yesterday and they talk Sarah into lighting off some of the mortars that were there. OK, so there's one mortar that actually had four. Four mortars in it. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. And so now my understanding of it wasn't that all four were supposed to go off at once. Maybe it is. I don't know. But what I know is when it shot out of the the tube, um, it didn't go as high as it should have and then exploded. And it probably went 40 feet in the air, 50 feet in the air and exploded all four of these mortars all at once. And it was like, whoa. That was a little too close. And the kids are like, this is great. Do it again. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't like this. So Sarah's like, okay, we'll do one more. So she gets one of the, the single mortars, right, lights it off. This time, this one only goes about 30 feet in the air. Ooh. And it goes Ouch. pow. Yeah. And it's like there are flame <laughs> they're like flames shooting down at us and i'm like shit you know it's like there's like these there's like this this these fireworks like flying down at us and i'm like 
Oh my God. And when it was done, I'm looking around. I'm like, is everybody okay? Everybody's all right. Everybody's got all their eyeballs. Everybody's got everything. Um, and I'm like, okay, all right. And then I look at my kids and my kids are like, that was awesome. And I'm like, that was not awesome at all. You know, so I'm, I get, I got to be the grumpy old man with the kids and I was like, <laughs> they were like, can we do one more? And I'm no, no, <laughs> no, we are done. We are done with fireworks. Uh, so that, that, that was our 4th of July or 5th of July, uh, lighting off fireworks. We live in a rural area, so, you know, we could still light off fireworks on the 5th and not get in trouble for it. But, oh my gosh, that was, and so it sort of confirmed my, uh, uh, my desire to be like, nah, nah, I'm not really trusting any of this stuff that's is particularly, uh, been assembled in, in some factory that also has been sitting around for four years uh, settling and, and, and really not, uh, who knows what it, what it has become while it's been sitting in a closet right. for four years. So, yeah, our fourth was pretty chill. We, well, now you went out to your sisters, right? You went out to my sisters yep. at the burger hot dog. thing. Hello, Stephanie. Hi, Steph. Um, did the burger hot dog thing. She is about to pop mm-hmm. with, uh, with, uh, my, uh, my little niece. Yeah. She's about had it up to her eyeballs with this. Yeah, pregnancy. actually, um, probably, I don't know. Um, well, we know she, so just like B, uh, uh, B was uh breach, which for our listeners who have never, who haven't had a baby, such, and haven't don't had know a baby breach is. means. So you want your baby to have their head down when right. they're coming out. Head's supposed to come out that's first. The biggest part you yes. want to get that out. Yep. It's pretty dangerous if they come out feet first. Yep. Um, so in the U S it's not the same in every Western country, surprisingly, um, and in the U.S., if it's breached, they're not going to try to deliver it naturally. They're going to do a C-section. So B was breach. We did a planned C-section. Interestingly, this is something that happens in like less than five percent of pregnancies. Um, and to me, it's it's it, you know part of my statistical education. It's only weird if it happens less than five percent of the time. Um, but uh, but uh, my sister also her uh, kid is breech. And so she, uh, we know that, uh, that kid is coming, hopefully not before just cause you know, emergency C-sections aren't as fun, but or aren't as good or aren't as safe. Right. Um, but, uh, we know that kid's coming on, uh, uh, on the 11th. So, um, I'll be an uncle very less than soon. a week. Yeah. Yeah. We're almost there. Um, so, uh, that's going to be a big thing happening. Um, you know, lots of family over and, and, you know, that's the funny thing is cause when you know the date. Like my mom had, you know, changed, had a flight to come up a little bit after the due date, just, you know, to make sure that she was here when the baby right. was here. But now she like changed her now flight. Now that she knows when the baby's coming. She changed her flight for like the, you know, the night before and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. My sister gave some sob stories. So they kicked, they knocked off the change fee and all that. <laughs> and, but yeah, so. You um, don't, so I mean, like, like you and I both know this, like, like there's nothing more persuasive than a pregnant woman. Like you well, just yeah. don't even, you just don't even think about saying no to oh, a pregnant woman. Absolutely. Yeah. There's just, yeah. It, it, Cause if you do, it's just not good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you don't yeah, want any of that. So my sister has had not a great pregnancy and, uh, but the baby's healthy and stubborn and won't turn around. And so, uh, um, just like B, um, so hopefully she's as cool as B, uh, we know it's a she, um, but, uh, we know her name is Iris. Yeah. Um, so, uh, B's going to have a little cousin, um, and you're going to be an uncle. I'm going to be an uncle, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that was a lot easier than the other one. (laughs) Um, it's a lot easier than becoming a dad. Yeah. That Um, is true. But yeah, so, uh, that's, that's a big thing happening. For uh, B, if we're talking about kids, uh, I mean, it'd be, it's been interesting to watch because she loves Aunt Steph, and now Aunt Steph is not going to pay that much attention <laughs> to her. And so I'm going to see. And Steph's going to be a little uh, preoccupied. Yeah, and, and Grandpa and Grandma. Are That's not right. Pay that much attention. They're, 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 they're going to have a new toy, and she's yeah. going to be like, what the hell, man? Yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> definitely like we think like the biggest impact for her is going to be watching. Uh, Aunt Steph, yeah. like, uh, who used to just give her a hundred percent of her yeah, attention yeah. Yeah. every time she saw her is now going to be like, uh, sorry, sweetie, I have something else to do. That's hilarious. But yeah. So, so yeah, that's the big thing happened in our life. Uh, our 4th of July was pretty chill. We were over there, um, you know, uh, eating hot dogs and hamburgers and, and all that. Uh, uh, um, 
we uh, and then we left pretty early, you know, because we got a little kid, and we came back and just sat on our back porch and listened to the uh, world explode for you know the next five hours. Which is and, you know that's a better way to do it than having fireworks land, you know, shoot thirty feet above your head and yeah. then send flaming balls back at your yeah. eyeballs. We drank a fuck ton of sour beers. And yes. Made Amanda, poor Amanda had to work the next day. Feel like <laughs> shit. Um, so she wasn't down for any more sour beer last night. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we had a, we had a nice time. Um, it was, a, it was really chill. It was like, I, I don't think I've spent that long a period on my back porch since we've had this house, like five plus hours. I, I actually put together a playlist. So, I started out on Amazon Music, like the the one that comes with Prime. So yeah, not like yeah. the not the one that you pay extra for. That which isn't very one. good anymore. But yeah, that's the, another but, conversation. But but so I just went first. I searched fourth songs called Fourth of July. So I made like a a playlist. There's a Soundgarden song called yeah. Fourth of July. Like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah there's yeah. A, there's there's a lot of songs called Fourth of July. And then we were writing out of that 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 gave us about fifty minutes. And then we that had Independence Day. Obviously, uh, the Martina McBride. Yeah, song Sarah is the listened most famous to that. One. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which isn't about Independence Day, but no, it's not. Um, but but also we had um, uh, the, when I did the Independence Day, I found out like, like three of the other songs that I put on there were just covers of that song. But there was <laughs> other songs, and rarely are any of them about actually Fourth of July. And then we, we did um, songs with firework or fireworks in them. So Katy Perry's firework song, most there we famous go. one. Um, and then again, about four of the ones that I added there were covers of that song. Yeah. And, and then we went to songs with just July in them. For me, the most famous one is uh, a song by the Decembrists called "July, yeah. July." Yeah, I've not heard um, that song, but I'm familiar with them. Yeah, but uh, but there was just some, you know. And then we did summer, and then summer and summertime, and that just gets a, yeah, a, just that, a deep bench of songs. That'll last. And it'll actually a hours. lot, a lot better songs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. there was some like in, in the other ones. You're wading through some really obscure like yeah. crap. Like yeah. there's just like, and not just not not that because it's obscure it was crap. There was a, like really bad songs <laughs> like that you were going through. So that was part of the fun yeah. of being like, wow, this sucks. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And, and and Amanda was not a fan of the Soundgarden yeah. song at all. Uh, what? <laughs> but I just okay. I don't know if Amanda listens to the podcast, but I don't know. We're gonna have no, to she definitely does not. We're gonna have to talk, Amanda, because I'm a little. Uh, You'll have to bring it up with her next yeah. time. Yeah, Amanda is working today. Um, that's why she's not here at that's, the, uh, that's at very, the clubhouse. That's very disappointing. I know. I know. I know. Um, also I'd say it's probably not one of their better songs. Psh, whatever. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> whatever but, you say, but, but definitely not Amanda's <laughs> cup of tea, yeah. uh, in terms of music styles. Yeah. Uh, but there was, it's pretty funny. There was one song, um, Independence Day song. That was from a band called Nonpoint, which is this like new metal band that I listened to when I was in high school. Yeah. And so I had definitely not listened to them for, yeah. you know, 17 years or something. Right. So I was like, oh, it's Nonpoint. And it definitely sounded like new metal, man. It was just like, yeah, it's yeah this is like a formulaic new metal song. So, but yeah, we did that, drank a lot of sour beers and then some Bodhi and whatever. And, and man, it was, it was pretty chill forth. It was nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've got this four day week in rock and you have a, Tw- I have like day a, weekend uh, yeah whatever. i have like an eight week weekend yeah eight week weekend um but yeah so but yeah um i don't know man this has been a pretty good it's been nice yeah just uh nice having you here at my yeah, house it's been awesome you know we're, uh, we're gonna record another podcast right after this which you're gonna have to you're gonna have to wait and see yeah, what that's going to be like. Yeah, it's special and exciting and we'll we'll, ex- we'll explain. It's going to be different. It's definitely going to be different. Yeah. Um cuz we're going to do two episodes while I'm here. Yeah. And, and the second one's different. Well, drink beer in that one too. Yeah. Uh, and eat ribs, leftover eat ribs. ribs. Uh yeah, so so stick around for that. Subscribe yeah. so Subscribe. you can get that new bonus content. 100%. Um give us a five-star rating. Please. Um uh, a lot of, uh, not a lot, but you, some of you have, and we really yeah. appreciate that. And we've got like a dozen five star ratings, which is so. So if you were one of the people that gave us that rating, we appreciate you. Yeah, because the and, the big thing is that the ratings help people find us. Yeah, that's the big thing. The higher rated shows tend to turn up more in the algorithm when people are looking for stuff. So, so we appreciate that. Yeah, so we appreciate it. And if you're listening, um, go on. 
particularly iTunes, iTunes Apple, is the big one. Well, Apple Podcasts, I guess yeah. it's not, I don't know, iTunes or whatever. Yeah, iTunes or Apple we're Podcasts, in this weird whatever. space where iTunes isn't really existing yeah, anymore. Yeah, they're breaking it apart. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, But yeah, so Apple, Apple uh, give, give us five star on that. That's That'd be awesome. probably the most important one. It is. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, if you're listening on Overcast or Stitcher or whatever else, if you want to give us a five star on, if you're actually using the Podbean app, which we don't do anymore. Yeah. Um, but we don't host on there anymore. Yeah. Um, so sorry if you were, you were sorry. using that pod bean app and it's not sorry. showing up anymore. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Apologies there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but honestly, just go to one of the kind of the, the feeder services yeah. and then yep. you, you won't have to worry about that. Yep. Um, but yeah, thank you for all those people that have subscribed and, uh, and, and we're sorry that <laughs> it's been kind of weird for the last couple of weeks, but it'll, it'll normalize again. Yep. Um, starting with this podcast and, and, and it'll be fun going into, uh, the, the rest of the summer. And then, yeah, we have something fun, uh, coming up. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for listening. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. <laughs>